हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट प्रेगनेंसी एंड एम्ब्रियोनिक डेवलपमेंट प्रेगनेंसी आल्सो नोन एज जेस्टेशन एंड दिस इज अ प्रोसेस इन विच देयर इज फॉर्मेशन ऑफ वन और मोर देन वन ऑफ स्प्रिंग इन साइड वोमेन यूट्रस और वॉम एंड दिस पीरियड इज नोन एज प्रेगनेंसी और गेस्टेशन पीरियड दैट इज फॉर नाइन मंथ और फोर्टी वीक्स फॉर ह्यूमन फीमेल फ्रॉम द लास्ट मैंस्ट्रल साइकिल प्रेगनेंसी एंड्स बाई लाइव बर्थ और समटाइम देयर मे बी एबॉर्सन और मिस कैरेज सो प्रेगनेंसी इज द ड्यूरेशन फ्रॉम इम्प्लांटेशन अप टू लाइव बर्थ और एबॉर्सन देयर इज अ नंबर ऑफ इवेंट अकर्स एट द टाइम ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी सो हाउ प्रेगनेंसी is getting started in previous video we discuss about the process of fertilization and implantation so from that one again this is given here at the time of fertilization when a sperm comes in contact with ovum there will be completion of meiosis 2 that was already arrested in metaphase 2 and after that secondary oocyte converted into ovum and there will also be formation of a second polar body so here in this diagram this is second polar body and here this is egg or ovum that is carrying its own nucleus as well as nucleus of sperm we also discuss there is a protective covering around secondary oocyte that will also continue after fertilization in zygote this protective covering is known as zona pellucida that is a non cellular proteinaceous layer this layer was secreted by secondary oocyte now after this there will be a number of embryonic developmental stages and finally there will be implantation so what are the embryonic stages we discuss there is stages like morula blastula gastrula neurula all are these embryonic stages so all these embryonic stages achieved by a number of frequent mitosis that is embryonic mitosis or cleavage here so what is cleavage this is rapid embryonic mitosis in which number of cell increases but their size gradually decreases so here will be huge number of cells these cells are randomly organized here after this there will be compactation of these embryonic cells so these cells are organized here every and each cell we already discuss at the time of embryonic development is known as blastomeres so these blastomeres are organized here and later on there will be differentiation so just here from blastomeres now there will be development of two type of cells the peripheral blastomere cells are known as trophoblast cells while the centrally organized cells are known as inner cell mass both are blastomeres now later on there will be further more development and cavity formation will be there that is known as cavitation so here because of more growth of trophoblast cells there will be a cavity this cavity is known as blastocele so here this is trophoblast outer layer inside the projected notch like structure is inner cell mass and around inner cell mass there is a cavity which is blastocele still there is presence of zona pellucida now after this there is gradual movement of fertilized egg or earlier embryonic stages from the site of fertilization that was we discussed ampulla inside the fallopian tube this fertilized egg or developing embryo is gradually moving towards the uterus when this reaches in the uterian body region at that time there will be degeneration of zona pellucida this degeneration of zona pellucida is known as zona hatching this occurs nearly 6 day 
after fertilization so from day 1 here after fertilization these are the events so 6 day after fertilization there will be breaking of zona pellucida how this zona pellucida is getting ruptured because of more and more secretion of liquid substances by these trophoblast cells inside the cavity that is blastocoel so there will be internal pressure because of that pressure this zona pellucida is getting ruptured and this structure that releases out after breaking of zona pellucida in ncert is given as blastocyst so what is blastocyst blastocyst is a structure that carrying blastocoel trophoblast and inner cell mass this whole structure is blastocyst and the stage is blastula after this the blastocyst comes very close to uterian innermost layer that is known as endometrium so here this is the innermost layer of uterus or endometrium and this blastocyst now comes in contact with this after removal of this zona pellucida this blastocyst comes in contact with uterian wall by the region where there is orientation of inner cell mass and now this gradually move inside finally this reaches inside the uterian epithelial layer that is endometrium so here this is endometrium and now this blastocyst is fully covered by this endometrial uterian layer means this is now totally inside at this time there will be rapid proliferation in these endometrium layer and they causes covering around whole of this blastocyst at the same time there will be differentiation in this trophoblast layer and here these are the layers so trophoblast differentiated into two layers outer layer is known as syncytiotrophoblast while the inner one is known as cytotrophoblast these two layers of trophoblast later on are responsible for formation of a number of finger like projections that finger like projections are known as chorionic villi so here in this diagram you can see these are finger like projections that are formed by these trophoblast layer and that finger like projections later on responsible for the development of placenta so we discuss about that at the same time there will also be differentiation here in this inner cell mass so cells of inner cell mass that is very close to trophoblast they are getting converted into epiblast while those which are very close to this cavity that is blastocoel are getting converted into hypoblast now after this these two layers that is epiblast or hypoblast that are modified inner cell mass because of separation or dissociation of this epiblast from this trophoblast layer now they both move freely here in the cavity that is blastocoel cavity and the joint region of this epiblast and hypoblast is known as bilaminar disc so this bilaminar disc will continue and there will be a number of changes so this upper one that is epiblast later on getting converted into amnion there will be formation of amniotic cavity that is filled with amniotic fluid this is formed by this epiblast while this lower one that is hypoblast is getting converted into yolk sac later on this epiblast is start to invaginate that is given here very clearly this is invagination of epiblast so epiblast cells now trying to fold its own but down side or inner side that is towards hypoblast so this color here this blue color here is for hypoblast so these cells are moving down side this is invagination of epiblast and there will be a narrow tube like structure that tube like structure is known as primitive streak so formation of primitive streak is actually initiation of 
gastrulation that will responsible for formation of three embryonic layers that you can see here so this outer one is ectoderm this is mesoderm and this is earlier endoderm but all the three layers are developed by this epiblast ecto endo and meso later on this hypoblast is getting degenerated so lower most cells of epiblast that is here after invagination they will form endoderm while the uppermost layer is ectoderm and this middle region will form mesoderm so in case of embryonic development first of all there will be development of ectoderm and endoderm mesoderm developed after the development of these two layers so here there will be formation of mesoderm after development of bilaminar disc like structure now later on there will be formation of whole of the body by these three embryonic layers ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm they are responsible for development of whole of the body of a individual person as we know in case of human body as well as animals they are carrying four different types of tissue system epithelial tissue system neural tissue system connective tissue system and muscular tissue system and these tissue system are responsible for development of whole of the body so this ectoderm is responsible for development of neural tissue system as well as epithelial tissue system this mesoderm is responsible for development of muscular as well as connective tissue system while endoderm along with these two are responsible for development of epithelial tissue system after these three phases there is neurulation phase that is related with neural development that will continue in organogenesis which is related with organ development and this will continue till birth there are also few organs which will continuously developed after birth after this there will be further changes this mesoderm here is spread in this structure and covers whole of these two layers this epiblast and hypoblast all around covered by the mesoderm so this blue colored structure that is mesoderm here is spreading and covered all around these two so as we discuss epiblast is responsible for development of amniotic cavity or amniotic sac while this hypoblast is responsible for development of yolk sac the whole of these two are getting covered by this mesodermal layer at the same time there will be proliferation of this trophoblast that is getting converted into these finger like projections that we discuss these are chorionic villi later on this mesoderm fuses with this trophoblast and they will form chorion layer further there will be development of embryo here in between these regions and finally few part of this yolk sac along with mesoderm is getting converted into umbilical cord so umbilical cord is a link in between mother's body and developing embryo or fetus so as we discuss pregnancy or gestation is a process in which one or more of springs develop inside a woman uterus or womb and this period is known as or duration is known as pregnancy period or gestation period this is for 9 month or 40 weeks from the last of menstrual cycle in human female pregnancy ends by live birth or sometime there may be abortion or miscarriage so we can generally say after implantation up to birth or abortion the duration is known as pregnancy or gestation there will be a number of sequential events at the time of pregnancy as we earlier discussed there will be embryonic mitosis or cleavage that will leads to formation of 2 4 8 16 cell structures so 8 to 16 cell structure we discuss is morula later on there will be further few more cells and 
128 cell stage is blastula then there will be gastrula neurula and organ tissue system development will be there so in the first week after fertilization there will be implantation so when blastocyst reaches into uterine body that is covered with a protective non cellular proteinaceous layer that is zona pellucida because of more and more secretion by trophoblast cells there will be internal pressure and that pressure causes breaking or rupturing of zona pellucida now blastocyst is ready to implant or ready to attach with the innermost uterian layer so implantation what is implantation this is embedding or attachment of blastocyst into the endometrium of uterus that is the innermost layer this process is known as implantation and this occurs after one week of fertilization so from the day of fertilization seventh day implantation will be there now in second week what are the events so blastocyst that is now embedded by endometrial layer their outermost layer that is peripherally arranged blastomere cells they are known as trophoblast while there will be a notch like innermost blastomere cells that are inner cell mass so trophoblast as we discuss divided into two layers outer syncytiotrophoblast and inner cytotrophoblast this is multinucleated condition while here this is uninucleated condition so both these layer projected into a number of finger like projections that is known as chorionic villi and these chorionic villi surrounded by uterian tissue and maternal blood later on this will convert into placenta at the same time inner cell mass is also getting differentiated into epiblast and hypoblast epiblast are the cells of inner mass which are very close to trophoblast while hypoblast are the cells of inner mass which is away from trophoblast or we can say they are very close to blastocoel so as we discuss epiblast is converted into amniotic cavity that is filled with amniotic fluid while hypoblast converted into yolk sac at the same time we discuss chorionic villi that is modified trophoblast connected with uterian tissue and the whole structure is now considered as placenta so what is placenta this is connection in between chorionic villi these are finger like projections of trophoblast and uterian tissue that is mother's tissue so they both are getting connected and they form placenta placenta is a structural and functional unit between fetus and mother's body so when we are using the term fetus and embryo what are the basic difference the first two month duration is for embryo and after that two month there will be terminology like fetus in the third week there will be initiation of gastrulation what is gastrulation so this is development of three germ layers from epiblast we already discussed epiblast is responsible for development of ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm first from epiblast there will be formation of ectoderm and endoderm later on there will be development of mesoderm so how from epiblast there will be development of these three layer this is just because of epiblastic invagination what is invagination here so as you can see in this diagram this upper layer is about epiblast while this lower layer is hypoblast so epiblast cells now start to move towards hypoblast and this process is invagination at this time there will be a narrow tube like structure the entry point of tube is known as primitive streak while inside there is a notch like structure that is known as primitive node these are responsible for other conversions so as we discuss gastrula here is responsible for development of these three layers ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm ectoderm this causes development of neural and epithelial tissue system endoderm epithelial tissue system only while mesoderm muscular connective and epithelial tissue system gastrulation is followed by neurulation that is development of epithelia and nervous tissue system 
and later on there will be organogenesis that is development of organ this starts from the third week and continue till birth during these events the developing embryo or fetus we already discuss embryo is the term only for first two month after fertilization and after two month the next terminology we have to use fetus so this embryo and fetus connected with placenta what is placenta so we discuss here this is uterine tissue connected with chorionic villi this is modified trophoblast while these are mother these are tissues from mother's body they both fuse to form placenta so as we discussed placenta is a structural and functional unit between fetus and mother's body later on there will be development of umbilical cord so how this umbilical cord develop by yolk sac as well as mesoderm there will be formation of umbilical cord so this umbilical cord now causes a link in between placenta and developing fetus this fetus depends on their mother's body for in taking oxygen as well as nutrients by placenta there is no direct blood supply from mother's body inside the fetus by placenta by diffusion oxygen and nutrients supplied to embryo or fetus and carbon dioxide as well as excretory waste of embryo or fetus is again passes to placenta and from placenta by diffusion this supplied back into mother's body so placenta is a temporary endocrine gland as we already know there are two temporary endocrine gland found in female one that is corpus luteum which formed in every and each menstrual cycle after ovulation that is responsible for secretion of estrogen and progesterone while placenta formed in female only at the time of pregnancy and along with estrogen and progesterone there will be secretion of two more hormones hcg and hpl hcg this is human chorionic gonadotropin hcg also secreted by trophoblast that is outermost layer of blastocyst and at the time of implantation or very earlier this hcg secreted along with urine so with the help of hcg anyone can identify about the pregnancy so this hormone is helpful in pregnancy test hpl this is human placental lactogen that is responsible for development of mammary gland also at the time of pregnancy along with these four at the last of pregnancy there will secretion of hormone relaxin but this is by ovary so this hormone responsible for relaxation of muscles that will help in easy childbirth or parturition out of these five hcg hpl and relaxin as we discuss secreted only at the time of pregnancy in female during pregnancy there will be also huge increment in hormone level like estrogen progestogens cortisol prolactin or prl that is also known as luteotropic as well as mammotropic hormone and thyroxin all these hormones are very essential for fetal growth and maintenance of pregnancy earlier progesterone secreted by corpus luteum and we know that this progesterone is also known as pregnancy hormone that is needed for maintenance of endometrium in first three month of pregnancy placenta as we discuss here is responsible for secretion of progesterone so placenta is not fully developed till that corpus luteum is the structure that is responsible for the secretion and corpus luteum present inside the ovary so if earlier in three month there will be removal of ovary this may cause abortion removal of ovary is known as oophorectomy